O my Lord, persons who chant the holy names of your Lordship are far, far advanced in spiritual life, even if born in families of dog-eaters. Such chanters have undoubtedly performed all kinds of austerities and sacrifices, bathed in all sacred places, and finished all scriptural studies. The famous example of this was presented by Lord Chaitanya, who accepted Thakur Haridas as one of his most important disciples. Although Thakur Haridas happened to be to take his birth in a Muslim family, he was elevated to the post of Namacharya by Lord Chaitanya due to his rigidly attended principle of chanting 300,000 holy names of the Lord daily. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And because he chanted the holy name of the Lord constantly, it is understood that in his previous life he must have passed through all the ritualistic methods of the Vedas, known as Shabda Brahman. Unless, therefore, one is purified, one cannot take to the principle of Krishna consciousness, nor become engaged in chanting the holy name of the Lord, Hare Krishna. Text 45. Prayat nad yatamanastu yogi samshuda kirisha aneka janma samsitas tato jati paragatim. Translation. But when the yogi engages himself with sincere endeavor in making further progress, being washed of all contaminations, then ultimately, after many, many births of practice, he attains the supreme goal. Purport. A person born in a particularly righteous, aristocratic, or sacred family becomes conscious of his favorable condition for executing yoga practice. With determination, therefore, he begins his unfinished task, and thus he completely cleanses himself of all material contaminations. When he is finally free from all contaminations, he attains the supreme perfection, Krishna Consciousness. Krishna Consciousness is the perfect stage of being freed of all contaminations. This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. Yesham Devanta Gatam Papam Jananam Punya Kamanam Te Devan Deva Moha Nirmukta Vajante Maham Dridavrata after many, many births of executing pious activities, when one is completely freed from all contaminations and from all illusionary dualities, one then becomes engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Text 46 Tapas vibhi yo dhiko yogi Jani vyo pi mato dhika Kami vyascha dhiko yogi Yogi Bhavajuna. Translation A yogi is greater than the aesthetic, greater than the empiricist, and greater than the fruitive worker. Therefore, O Arjuna, in all circumstances, be a yogi. Purport When we speak of yoga, we refer to linking up our consciousness with the supreme absolute truth. Such a process is named differently by various practitioners in terms of the particular method adopted. When the linking up process is predominantly in fruitative activities, it is called karma yoga. When it is predominantly empirical, it is called jhana yoga. And when it is predominantly in a devotional relationship with the Supreme Lord, it is called bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga or Krishna consciousness is the ultimate perfection of all yogas, as will be explained in the next verse. The Lord has confirmed herein the superiority of yoga, but he has not mentioned that it is better than bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga is full spiritual knowledge, and as such nothing can excel it. Ascetism without self-knowledge is imperfect. Empiric knowledge without surrender to the Supreme Lord is also imperfect and fruitive work without Krishna consciousness is a waste of time. Therefore, the most highly praised form of yoga performance mentioned here is bhakti yoga, and this is still more clearly explained in the next verse. Text 47 Yogina mapi savesham bhagatinantaratmana shradhavan bhajate yomam same yuktatamomata 
Translation And of all yogis, he who always abides in me with great faith, worshipping me in transcendental loving service, is most intimately united with me in yoga, and is the highest of all. Purport The word bhajati is significant here. Bhajati has its root in the verb bhaj, which is used when there is need of service. The English word worship cannot be used in the same sense as bhaja. Worship means to adore or to show respect and honor to the worthy one. But service with love and faith is especially meant for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One can avoid worshiping a respectable man or a demigod and may be called discourteous. But one cannot avoid serving the Supreme Lord without being thoroughly condemned. Every living entity is part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and thus every living entity is intended to serve the Supreme Lord by his own constitution. Failing to do this, he falls down. The Bhagavatam confirms this as follows. Yahisham Purusham Shak Sakshat Atma Prabhavam Ishvaram Nabhajantiya Bhajanati Stahana Drasta Patantiyata Anyone who does not render service and neglects his duty unto the primeval Lord, who is the source of all living entities, will certainly fall down from his constitutional position. In this verse also the word Bhajanti is used. Therefore, bhajanti is applicable to the Supreme Lord only, whereas the word worship can be applied to demigods or to any other common living entity. The word avajananti used in this verse of Srimad Bhagavatam is also found in the Bhagavad Gita. Avajananti Mahamuda. Only the fools and rascals deride the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna. Such fools take it upon themselves to write commentaries on the Bhagavad Gita without an attitude of service to the Lord. Consequently, they cannot properly distinguish between the word bhajanti and the word worship. The culmination of all kinds of yoga practices lies in bhakti yoga. All other yogas are but means to come to the point of bhakti in bhakti yoga. Yoga actually means bhakti yoga. All other yogas are progressions toward the destination of bhakti yoga. From the beginning of karma yoga to the end of bhakti yoga is a long way to self-realization. Karma yoga without fruitative results is the beginning of this path. When karma yoga increases in knowledge and renunciation, the stage is called jhana yoga. When jhana yoga increases in meditation on the supersoul by different physical processes, and the mind is on him, it is called Ashtanga Yoga. And when one surpasses the Ashtanga Yoga and comes to the point of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna, it is called Bhakti Yoga, the culmination. Factually, Bhakti Yoga is the ultimate goal, but to analyze Bhakti Yoga minutely, one has to understand these other yogas. The yogi who is progressive is therefore on the true path of eternal good fortune. One who sticks to a particular point and does not make further progress is called by the particular name, Karma Yogi, Jana Yogi, Ardhyana Yogi, Raja Yogi, Atha Yogi, etc. If one is fortunate enough to come to the point of Bhakti Yoga, it is to be understood that he has surpassed all the other yogas. Therefore, to become Krishna conscious is the highest stage of yoga, just as when we speak of Himalayan, we refer to the world's highest mountains, of which the highest peak, Mount Everest, is considered to be the culmination. It is by great fortune that one comes to Krishna consciousness on the path of bhakti yoga, to become well situated according to the Vedic direction. The ideal yogi concentrates his attention on Krishna, who is called Shamasundara, who is as beautifully colored as a cloud, whose lotus-like face is as effulgent as the sun, whose dress is brilliant with jewels, and whose body is flower garlanded. Illuminating all sides is his glory, is his gorgeous luster, which is called the Brahma Jolti. He incarnates in different forms such as Rama, Nishimha, Varaha, and Krishna, 
the supreme personality of Godhead, and he descends like a human being as the son of Mother Yashoda, and he is known as Krishna, Govinda, and Vasudeva. He is the perfect child, husband, friend, and master, and he is full with all opulences and transcendental qualities. If one remains fully conscious of these features of the Lord, he is called the highest yogi. This stage of highest perfection is in yoga can be attained only by bhakti yoga, as is confirmed in all Vedic literature. Yasya deve para bhakti yata deve tata guru tasyate kathita hi yata prakashante mahatmana only unto those great souls who have implicit faith in both the Lord and the spiritual master are all the imports of Vedic knowledge automatically revealed. Bhakti asya vajanam tadi hamutropati nirasyanam usmin mana kapanam etareva nashkamyam Bhakti means devotional service to the Lord, which is free from desire for material profit, either in this life or in the next. Devoid of such inclinations, one should fully absorb the mind in the Supreme. That is the purpose of Nashkamya. These are some of the means for performance of Bhakti or Krishna consciousness, the highest perfectional stage of the yoga system. Thus in the Bhaktivedanta purports to the sixth chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita in the matter of Sankhya Yoga, Brahma Vidya. <laughs>